it would be kind of nice if he kind of had something like similar to what the Black Panthers did in the 70s with like the free breakfast idea. Sure. So that was like a community held breakfast where yeah. the members of the community were providing the food so all these kids could eat in the morning. So when they went off the school, they weren't starving Yeah. and stuff like that. And actually, you know, I don't know if you knew this or not, but the WIC program was actually inspired by that. So the WIC program, the uh, women and infants, women, infants, and children, that helps. Um, it's a government sub- uh, subsidy. Okay, that helps women, infants, and children with food, mm. like women with young kids helps them with food. Yeah, and I don't know if any other state does it. Maybe, but I know Iowa does do it. And actually, okay. if you go to grocery stores, I, you will see like in certain labels, WIC approved. Wick mm, approved, yeah, that okay. kind that of stuff. Familiar. It's kind of like a food stamp program. It's pretty similar, but it, it's yeah. geared towards helping women who have young children who don't have means of actually taking care of their kids. Now that was inspired actually by the Black Panthers, mm-hmm. you know, because of their communal breakfasts. Yeah, no, I mean, look, um, I think a lot of uh, you know, I mean, really any, any organizations, but I think uh, you know. In America, black organizations have really, um, in my opinion, like really shown like or, sh- you know, shine to really positive light in those aspects that a lot. Mm. I mean, and that's kind of the really sad thing about history is like a lot of these groups are like Black Panthers and um, the Crips and the Bloods, like they're really frowned upon. But it, people, what thing people don't realize is like, in, in a sense, they almost played the part of police or government or whatever yes, like they, really they, they 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 were someone that they're you know w- that was in their community and they were like okay we're gonna you know and in a sense they kind of did <laughs> what government did with taxes right they were right. like hey you know uh you need to like give us a vig right and like that that's sh- there's shitty aspects of that as well but like yeah i guess but anyways like there's something about that that I think is really positive mm-hmm. that people I, I wish people would take w- more away from that like, even something like the mafia right like, <laughs> uh, like okay broad broad spectrum definitely plenty of aspects of the mafia that aren't good I'm willing to acknowledge that <laughs> to, to say the least to say the least <laughs> but but look um bodies floating in the river <laughs> shit. yeah that that's not such a great not thing good. but okay but look but look uh, like on on surface level right like yeah. what like what does the mafia created for it was created for Italian immigrants who came to this country initially <clears throat> and they were not properly represented by the police. They were not helped by the government. So what did they do? They created their own form of government. They created the mafia. Yeah. And as with, I mean, was it with anything, it <laughs> eventually well, spiraled had, out of control, well, right? Actually, it was a transplanted idea from Sicily. Like, cause mm-hmm. they had the same thing in, in these cities like Palermo and Sicily and stuff like that, where government really didn't do anything for them, helped them out. Nothing at all. Gave them nothing. Let the poorest just, just, absolutely starve Mm -hmm. and it was uh you know a kleptocracy yeah where they're just kind of stealing left and right and leaving nothing behind and so that's where la cosa nostra came from in sicily and when it came over to america well it was the same sort of deal here it's like Mm -hmm. you know no one cares about italians so (laughs) we gotta care about ourselves here Mm -hmm. so yeah no no <clears throat> now, I get what you're saying here. And the reason, just to clarify, the reason why I said that policing, I think, can be a part of the solution, really because, let's be honest here, it's not going to go away. Yeah. Like, defunding the police, I don't think that's going to happen. I, no, no. It, I, it, I, I, don't, I don't see that as a realistic solution here. So it's going to be there no matter what. Now, I agree. But what can we, <laughs> yeah, but it's going it's to be there. It's going to be there for better or for worse. So... Why not try to make it into something that actually is a positive force rather than just rather than just kind of assuming leaving it as a negative and just kind of hoping these pie in the sky ideas about defunding the police, which. I mean, I agree. I, 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 agree. I mean, let's be per- <laughs> let's be perfectly honest here. Yeah. In any situation, no matter who you are, if someone breaks into your house mm-hmm. or if your kid went missing. Mm hmm. First call you're gonna make is gonna be to who? <laughs> it's good. I mean, it's okay. Yes, it's going to be the police. There's a reason for that though, because yeah. they have uh, left no other option. Yes. When you have when you have you know certain okay okay what in the instance of getting your house broken into, if you live in California for instance, you're not allowed to have a gun. You're not allowed if someone breaks into your house, you're not allowed to shoot. You can't have guns at all in California. Um, you have okay. Not that's not that's not true. Uh, well, okay, 
you have to have like it, the layers that you have to have to get a gun. I, that's not true that you can't have a gun in California. I know for a fact that it is true that you can't shoot an intruder. If an intruder comes into your home, you cannot shoot and kill. Well, yeah, it doesn't can... surprise me that the stand your ground law does not apply <laughs> out there. Uh, yeah. That does not surprise me one little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but but look, I mean, I so okay, so like if you live in a state where you can't properly arm yourself, if you can't properly defend yourself, I mean, that that again is um, a fault of the government, the same mm, entity that right. it runs the police that does all these things. So I mean, so they paint this thing like, yeah, we're gonna give you the police. And the police are going to help you. But they don't help you. <laughs> and actually, what they end up doing is they take away resources and capital and all these things that, like, would help you, enable you to protect yourself better. Right. So, that's always my argument. I, I am a <laughs> I am a believer in defunding the police. I think they should be abolished in my mind. Yeah. Um, I, I, the, the amount of, um, you know, just how, how much they harm people just outweighs the positives in my mind. I think the positives that come from police come from an individual level. Mm. And I don't think that's something that is inherent to policing. I think it's inherent to just being a human person, being a human being. Right. I don't think that those people who do courageous things as police officers would just not do courageous things. Well, yeah. <laughs> not being yeah, officers. I think, you know? no, I, no, I think you're right. And I think that kind of goes into the bigger problem here is that a lot of the problems you have with policing is institutional. Yes. It's not individual. And that's actually a lot of the arguments that like the Black Lives Matter folks have been making ever since. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not the one person, the one good cop out there who is an actual sweet person, doesn't hurt anybody, does help, mm -hmm. and is out there to actually do a good thing and make a good change here. It's more of like, just kind of like the institution in which these people work in um, that kind of will take a good, otherwise good person and kind of like warp yes. them, turn them into something, into something else here. Even if it's gradual, even if they don't really realize it, you know. And it does. I mean, I can see how it can happen. I mean, if you are around a certain type of people all the time, mm -hmm. and you experience all these things, and you get you you take all these experiences and you put them in through a lens of, you know, people we deal with are barbaric animals it'd be better if they were all just gone who cares if one kills the other blah 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 you know you know all it is is just one more piece of human trash we don't have to deal with that type of thing you know honestly i even though you might find it repulsive at first you could you can you will kind of that will seep into your character over time and so it's really more institutional and not individual so you're right yeah i agree um you know, it's it's. I know it's always kind of an extreme opinion, mm. or not even opinion, an extreme angle. But um, um, you know, the Nazis. Yeah. Like I, I don't. You cannot tell me that a hundred percent of the people who were recruited into the Nazi party were like all on board a hundred percent with Hitler. There are a lot of people no. who there. Not a lot. There's at least I don't even know. There's a percentage of people. <laughs> I'm not educated. Well, you, There's a percentage of people yeah. who. We're not on it because um, they were all with Hitler. Well, it's because you know, everyone around right. them is joining. Their right. entire country is going a certain way. Like right. they, well, that's and, where the totalitarian regime comes in, right? Yes. Because you create this atmosphere of fear, and yes. anyone, yes. anyone who dares say anything other than what the Fiora says is now considered yes. an, an enemy of the state. Yes.